Saseni, welcome to Sela's Reflection. I have uh, missed you so much, guys. Did you come many miss? And we are back. Back with another episode on mental health. Reason being, it's May. May we mark many mental... May it's the where we talk about mental health. We create more awareness on mental health. Now, just say people are talking about mental health left, right, and center. If it's not about talking about it, you're seeing someone who is just having a mental health issue, problem, whether on socials, ama kwa family, ama to where you live. So it's out there. So the more we talk about it, we create awareness on mental health. And today, since we miss the expert on mental health, I have a very wonderful guest. Her name is Nancy, but I want her to introduce herself better. Karibu sana, Nancy. Thank you very much, Celestine. I'm really honored to be in this platform today as talking about mental health being Mental Health Awareness Month. So to introduce myself, my name is Nancy Kihara. I'm a clinical psychologist by profession. I'm practicing. Uh, for the last 18 years, I've been in the medical field. So this is an area that I'm very passionate about. I'm also the founder of My Afia Africa. It's a mental health organization where we offer teletherapy services online. For the last 18 years, you've been a clinical? I'm in the medical field for the last 18 years. On that category? Yes, but now I specialized in clinical psychology. This so, is where I'm practicing now. I am so happy to have Madam Nancy here because most of the times, her to join you what happens on that other side. So guys, as we keep saying, when you're not okay, seek counseling services, uh, talk to someone, you know those things that mm -hmm. we say, if you feel you're not okay, take a walk, eh? talk to a counselor, am I your friends, no, no. So after, if, this, if all this is not working, mm -hmm. we advise you mm -hmm. to go see Madam Nancy, yes. a clinical psychologist. Psychologist, Mkamba Yojina psychologist, in a katanga kutoka kila sa. So if all these things don't work, I'm if it becomes serious, mm -hmm. now we advise you to go to the hospital mm -hmm. and see a clinical psychologist. Sasa happened on ikona maswali. Out here, mm -hmm. we've seen these people, be it critical cases, mm -hmm. ama shallow cases. Mm -hmm. According to you, na jomibi, kuna, kuna critical and... Yeah. Oh. Yes. So when we tell these people to come, I'm assuming, mm -hmm. is it like a hospital? Mm -hmm. Is it, uh, do I walk in, cause I can be like this, looking all this, I'm like, but I'm not okay mentally. Yes. So I can choose to, first of all, mm -hmm. can I take myself to you, mm -hmm. like me when you're poor mentally, mm -hmm. I might have to come with someone if I'm not mentally okay. There are two ways of looking at it, uh, and I'll give two different settings. So you can see Nancy in her own consultancy as a clinical psychologist. Also, Nancy works in a facility, so it will depend in which scenarios. So, for example, if you, let's say you're going through situations that they're really stressing you up and you really need to speak to a therapist, you can walk into either. If you go to a hospital setup, they have outpatient facility and they have therapists who will take care of you. If you're coming to, uh, just like the way you see in a hospital setup, you can go to a doctor's plaza or a hospital. So, either of them works. It depends with what is the need at that point in time. To answer your question as to whether it is voluntary or involuntary, again, it depends. There are people who get to a point and they realize, by the way, I'm tripping. Mm -hmm. I'm losing it. I need help. So I am going to turn myself in. So sometimes people don't know the where. Where do I need to go? But there are people who just go online, mental health facility, and the first one they see, they're like, I'm going here, or they call, and they turn themselves in. They come, they say, I'm going through this and this and this. I really need to be helped by someone. So unasema kuna msetu aneza amuka, mm -hmm. asa nebedhe I'm not okay. Yes. Madhare hu, hivi, hivi. Yes. Ajingize tu madhare, yes. aone daktari. I need help. Mm -hmm. I need to see a doctor. This is what I'm feeling, you guys help me. Okay. Then there's someone who will be brought by family or friends, or even sometimes it's the employer or colleagues. So you have um, maybe an issue of, you know, the, it's not every time that people who come to the facility are substance issues. Sometimes you're going through other conditions or disorders like bipolar and you get the, the times you get a flare up, what you call, a, um, when you get a relapse because you're on treatment or it is your first time and for whatever reason you got a trigger and you got yourself, in a, you're, you're not okay. So these people now, because you're not yourself at that point, they'll be brought into the facility by their loved ones. So that particular one, we'll call it involuntary. 
admission. Yes. So now I'm thinking, nimeamka, nimeenda job vizuri, nimepata hiyo relapse kwa ofisi. Mm -hmm. Maybe even my colleagues didn't know about mm -hmm. whether I take whether I take meds ama nini. Mm -hmm. So there is a certain image I have in the office. Yes. Relapse may come. Haitambui. Ni It doesn't choose where I was. Yes. So let's say I'm doing a show here mm -hmm. all of a sudden. So they'll have to take me in somewhere involuntary because yes. it's not under my request. Yes. Nikikuja kwa ko Nancy. Mhm. Mm I look, I don't look sick. Ment, mental health si ati ninyo tapi madamu. Like mm -hmm. uangalie, kidonda. Mm -hmm. yes. So as you're, conver as you're having our conversation, Nancy, mm -hmm. I'm like, Nancy, misi mgonjwa. Our so men let up, miss jushi dawi kwa hapi. Yes. How do you handle these people? Because these people, they can. Like, uki muangalia si mgonjwa, na haumjui. Mm -hmm. But I'm telling you, I'm not sick. I was just in the office with them and I'm not sick. All right. There'll be two instances as well. Uh -huh. In a clinical setup, there are two ways that that can play out. If, for example, my challenge is in substance use, there is always denial because of the shame that comes with myself being in substance use. Probably I'm also trying to stop and I'm still not able to. So these people will be in denial. So when they, you bring them, they'll say, I, I'm okay. It's them who brought me. So they are still in that state of denial. Now, that is why I'm a trained psychologist. I will try to work with you to just first give you time to settle. And then we will have now conversations trying now to bring you to understand your circumstances right now, why you're here, even in that denial state. Because sometimes people are really trying to fight the vice itself, but they are not able to, and they feel like they are failure either to the society, to the family, to the spouse, to the loved ones. So now for you is now to be the person who is be going to be able to walk with them through this journey, affirming them and telling them that what you're trying to achieve, we are here, we shall help you to walk through this journey so that you're able to get them off from the denial to start the journey. Because it doesn't mean they'll get to acceptance because you've said it. Mm. You have to keep having now this conversation. You start the first step. Now you keep now moving towards the direction of wanting to show them, do you think this is where the problem could be? Because you probe, you don't tell, you probe. Mm. When you're taking the history, you'll pick certain trends and use these trends to reflect back to them. This is in a bid to help them understand where this is coming from without having a reference to the people who brought them, to try and show them you as a person, how are you part of this, what is happening to you, and how can we help you to first also get the understanding, the awareness, even to be able to do behavioral activation. Because if they are still in denial, I'll not be able to help you to even start the journey in itself. Now that works well when it is in substance abuse. Now, when I'm going through other medical clinical disorders, let's say I have bipolar, for example. And bipolar, there is a time I'll be manic or depressive. So if I'm in the manic stage, you know, I'm very active, I'm disruptive. Um, you, you, the energy levels are usually very high at that point. So even when they are bringing you, you're not aware because your brain is firing very fast. So by the time you come to the facility, you may still be like, I don't think I'm, a, I think I'm okay. Mm. But you see, the first thing is to help you first to settle you and then we can start the conversation. So the first thing once you come for us is to receive you. In a clinical setting, that is, we receive you. If we need to help you calm down first before we even start engaging in conversation. So we'll take the history from the person who accompanies you to the facility. And from there, then we can walk the journey. If, we didn't have, if you came without someone who can give us the entire facility, we will, I mean history, we will start with the known, the basics. If you're in the office setup, and as you said, they do know that you take meds, or today something may trigger you even in the office. You get that uh, you have been able to manage your condition, you've never told it to your colleagues, but let's say um, a bang happens outside the office and you're coming from a, a, a place where you have had um, a traumatic experience. So you have this anxiety that gets triggered by events, PTSD. So if a crash happens, so the first thing for you, you go into the anxiety mode before maybe it can get out of hand. So by the time you're being brought, you're not aware of what happened. So if I settle you, once we settle you, now we start the conversation journey. So, um. There are, there, are, there are families where most, most of where I come from, mm. we first think of a rehab. Yeah. Like, tumpeleke rehab, Kwanza. Mm. Tumpeleke ni rehab, like, 
sorry to say but wengi tunasema ngami tushinda sasa tumpeleke rehab mm-hmm. like ikifika kwenye familia iko like eh. mm-hmm. now this one is out of hand mm-hmm. tumpeleke re- what is the difference between a mental facility uh-huh. and a rehab all right all of them are mental health facilities mm-hmm. because we are taking care of people who have a need to stabilize them mentally because of the things they are going through so when you come into a normal psychiatric facility is where we are going to stabilize you give you treatment for a period of days now remember there are this if you have a disorder for example a clinical disorder so the need is to to stabilize you then use therapy and also psychiatric as other interventions that are needed so that we can settle you after which when you stabilize you can continue with your treatment as an outpatient as you visit your therapy refill of medicine and all that now for substance abuse remember uh, the brain let me first take you a little bit of what happens with people who take substances because nobody is born as a user yeah. all right or as an addict mm. so you start kidogo kidogo, kidogo. Mm. so and usually sometimes it's a uh, you go out with friends you don't take alcohol they're like no it's a kidogo too or if it's a puff I would just try kidogo you and they are generous they you're not buying they're giving you so the first time you feel ah, it wasn't nice I repeat start feeling oh that feels different oh actually that feels nice the third time you even the one buying for yourself okay then you realize every time I take this substance could be it alcohol be it a puff I feel nice you know my moods elevate I'm happier actually forget my worries so my wife was making me unhappy at home for a moment i'm happy so if i'll forget her by this why not why not continue so what we do we activate the brain reward circuit okay there is a happiness hormone dopamine mm-hmm. so every time you take an, an an active ingredient it activates the brain and then it, the reward circuit is a dopamine is secreted and you feel the feel happy emotion So that's the reason why you go back and keep taking it. So what happens is that if I started with a glass, over time my body gets used to that glass. It doesn't give me the same effect. So for me to for me to get the same effect, I have to take two. Mm-hmm. Then my body adjusts to that. It's not giving me the I go to three. So one puff, two puffs. So una kula msokoto do a whole packet. There are people you ask how many cigars do you take in a day and they tell you eight. So you're counting in a day has eight hours so you get, yeah. Mm-hmm. So what well, that's called tolerance. So your body keeps building on tolerance, builds on tolerance. So that's more you continue taking and taking and taking. By the time you're becoming an addict, your body has become tolerant that unless you take more, you can't. it can't function the same way it was functioning before. Of course it starts affecting other areas of your life. It affects relationship, finances because you have to feed this habit. Mm-hmm. Um, and the other thing is that if it doesn't affect your relationship for finances uh, your work yeah. you'll get fired so this is what now happens in a situation for someone now the reason why they, you need now to be rehabilitated is because you have fed your body with all these substances and you need to get them out the longer it is that you have used the longer you the more time we also need to help you to come back to to normal so when you come to the hospital if you come to a clinical setting the first thing we'll do is detoxification in short detox helping you to not go into withdrawal now you see when people are taking alcohol and they are used or addicted to it this is what people call kutoa lock yeah <laughs> so na to lock na the same substance. substance yes it is because because of the body dependence mm-hmm. the moment you don't use it you get some with the draw effects shaking, shaking you know or just feeling like your body is not being itself so because you still want to function for that day it a bidi upige kidogo so that you function for that day you see again how much it's affecting you so now when you come to the facilities to help you fast not to go through with the draw because with the draws can be very d- dangerous they can kill so we do detoxification to help you to get rid of these substances and now prepare you to start rehabilitating you so the longer you have been in it the longer time you also need so it will be expensive to be in such a facility so a rehabilitation center where you have experienced specialized addiction counselors and uh, in a that setup that is where, where you go most of the rehab is between 90 days 
which is three months, six months, one year, it depends, mm -hmm. but at least 90 days of treatment. Yeah, I've heard out there people say, where's Nakwanga expensive? So now I understand. Yeah, yeah because it, it 90 has to days. be 90 days. Yeah. And also, it is important that if you're going for rehab, you as a person who is experiencing their substance addiction, you be ready. You need to have your mind, body, and soul ready for that process. Because if you're taken by your friends or your family because you're honestly very tired and they really want the best for you and the only way they think is if we throw you there, we want you back whole. Now, there are people who go in there with anger, come back bitter. So because they want to punish you without realizing that it's their own body they are harming, the first day they hit the gate, they go looking for this substance. So it's very important for even the person being rehabilitated. It's about you. You need to own the process. You need to realize that, it's that you are the person being helped. Then take responsibility because you find many people being uh, projecting it to other people. They wonder wanana niki wana shida na mimi sioni shida. But seriously, finances, relationship, everything is going downhill. How do we help you to come back? We will affirm you, yes. We will validate you, yes. But you have a role to play in this. So take your responsibility. We take our responsibility as caregivers and support system. Then we help you to get there. But some people come and determined, I'm done. I'm done and I'm here for myself. I'll change. So that you'll get the results will be positive because they have put in the work. Now I love, I love, I love, I love how you explained all that, and I love how you said, "Wondo wakonashida, me miss nashita," because out here most of, uh, most of the time in Akanga, like the family, they are the bad people, according to the person who is, uh, who is not okay. Yeah, na sama my family, mama yango, ata baba yango shuguliki na mimi. According to them, mwenye nam saidi, mwenye nam jali, don't buy. So when they come to you guys, mm. how do you get that person? Mm. Like akuskize, kuzi ana kwambi. Everybody around is bad, unless unamba ya is substance, ama unafanya Kenya nataka. Mm. That's when you're the good person. But the person who is trying to rectify that behavior mm. is always the bad person. Yes, now I'm talking that from the point of, now you're here and I want you to change. The focus is on you to take responsibility. But when I'm doing a collective support to this person, I will want to understand the interplay of nature and nurture. I'm talking about what environment are you coming from? Mm -hmm. I need to understand the environment of this person. Probably it's also triggering them into behavior of using the substances. Could it be, if, uh, if it's a young person, it's because they got into the behavior because it's peer. If it's an adult, is it because they're going through something, they're not able to express themselves, they're looking for something to numb their experiences. Or there's a lot of violence in the house and they don't have a way out. So they're, they're looking for a way to cope. So for my, my responsibility as a psychologist, as much as I want you to take responsibility because I want the best for you, at the end of the day, you're the first person I want the best for. You're my client. Mm -hmm. So don't, I don't want you to leave this facility the way you came. But I have to be cognizant that it, it takes a lot of more it, things to have, um, to bring you to, I want to use the word interplay. There are more things in your environment that make you get into that situation. Is it a you responsibility? Is it a familial? Is it family responsibility? Is it a workplace stress issue? What is happening? So I need to understand what is this person going through? So in the instances, I'll pick the family. The family may not even always be the problem, but because they're already frustrated, we call this compassion fatigue. Initially, when you started, they will be, they'll try to talk you out of it. But then over time, they realize it's getting nowhere. So they start getting frustrated with you. And at one point, they will even, what akurushia mikono, no, I mean, sumejaribu na and you don't want to do it. This person is not sane enough to just snap out of it, as I have told you about how the brain keeps getting, wanting to crave, the craving, the craving keeps coming. Even them sometimes they go through the same guilt and shame and embarrassment. How am I even getting myself here? But they can't just snap out of it. Addictions, you just can't snap out of it by yourself. And addictions could be anything to do with substance, mm. gambling. So we, these days, uh, gambling is also an, a, a mental health issue. Oh. Yes. Like I have to, in the morning, I have to place 
Yeah, 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 yeah. We have people admitted for gambling and losing a lot of, yeah, you know, things for the family or where they're employed or something like that. It could be pornography. You know, all these. And you know, there are those that you can speak about, then there are those that you can't yes. speak about. I even see people having a lot of challenge speaking about betting because of someone looking at you and wondering, wait a minute, like you're betting until you're, you're eating your everything to this. So it also comes with its so shame and stigma. So over time now, you try to understand where the patient is coming from. Now, it is very important, and this is a practice, bring in the family. There are things you'll pick when the client tells you, and if you feel the family is needed here, you need to bring them in so that they help the patient in the recovery process. Because, you know, when people give up on you, they give up on you. Like, they expect when you leave the hospital, see, to look at your bill. We expect you to... We expect you to. But they, they also have a responsibility first. How do we integrate this person back to the family where already you are trained in terms of your relationships? Yeah. So we need to tell you what they are going through. If it's a toxic workplace, you'll bring in the bosses. Now, toxic workplace, we have to equip you now okay. with how strategies of what is making you feel the way you're feeling. Are there things that are avoidable or not avoidable? Now, if they are not avoidable, can you grow out? If you can be able to manage, is it about your behavior? Because always, there is always, you'll be able to see, is this person the person who is unable to either cope or use a different way to interact with the bosses or the peers or something? Because all of us have different temperamental issues. So it could be my temperament that is a problem. It could be my personality that could be the problem. But it could also be that that place is still toxic. So do you have to be there? And if you have to be there, are you able to have a strategy of transitioning elsewhere? And if it is too bad, what would happen if you stepped out? So we cannot give you those decisions. We just probe and help you to see what works for you. At least you get to start seeing the possibilities. What can I do? What plans can I execute for me to get better for myself? Then you make the decision that's favorable for yourself. So, uh, in terms of the coping, I know the coping mechanism, so most of them in workplaces, they start drinking, like those habits, substance, because yes. it's toxic. My, I need this salary at the end of the day. Yes. But for me to survive, I need to take, I, I, need, I need something yes. in my body. Yes. So, if you try, if mm. you try maybe telling this person, hey, now squeeze my body liquor, mm. until it gets to that level where they're coming to you, mm -hmm. how do they... How do they respond? Like, because this person was a very nice person, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but along the way, see, mm -hmm. so you as uh, the colleagues, as the bosses, as the, as the friends, mm -hmm. you've tried, 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 maybe voluntary, mm -hmm. ama someone mm -hmm. took them to you. Mm -hmm. So how is it for them? Wakifika mm sasa -hmm. kwako. Like, okay. do they get to a point where I'm done with denying, now I need to, I need just to report myself? To report yourself to the psychologist? Yeah. Yes, you know, when you're coming, you're coming, if you're coming voluntary, you're already saying I have a problem. Sometimes people don't know exactly, I know I'm suffering, I'm struggling, but I, I really can't tell. Where? But sometimes they also can't tell, but they are blocked. For example, okay. you've given me a work situation. So I'll give you scenarios that have come across. So you're married, and then it was bliss. Then one day you discovered dude has been cheating, and that hits you like a thunderbolt. And all of a sudden, your jovial behavior, and this is not you, I'm giving an example. It is not this, me. Yes. <laughs> mm. So your, your, your concentration starts changing, you're more moody, you're, you know. Mm, at so the office now. At the office. Now, this is not something that I'm likely to discuss with you, Celestine or you're not likely to discuss with me. Because maybe I've been playing a couple goals out here. Yeah. Then all of a sudden, I can't even speak about what I'm going through. Even for me, I'm still in disbelief. So I start coming to work, sometimes I'm late, because last night in Kulala, we fought. Yeah. So the other times I didn't sleep well, I overslept. You know, or I didn't even sleep at home because when I was with the violence, I left the house. But I can't speak about it. So you will start noticing behavior change. Now, there's now to cope with that, there are people who can decide to come. 
seek for therapy, or there are people who first go into maladaptive coping mechanisms. They start taking alcohol, and then before they realize it becomes detrimental to their health. Yeah, so when they come, again, it's about taking the history. Where are you coming from? And our history doesn't just start from what has brought you there. We go way back to your childhood. So sometimes we feel frustrated with us therapists, they're like, I came for, why, what do you want my childhood for? Mm. We pick a lot of trends and patterns and influences that stem all the way from when you're, you were a child and now, how you cope with things, what triggers you. Probably you went through things that you, you don't even know that were pushed to your subconscious and you just need one trigger and they bring them to the fore. What has happened, and I see a lot of, uh, now that we're in the Mental Health Awareness Month, and I see a lot of uh, corporates being able to do this, is that they bring in experts to train uh, sometimes uh, people in um, the leaders or sometimes also the, the employees to understand when you start changing how to communicate. Because if I am a supervisor and I see Celestine, Celestine, you always used to be punctual. You never had deadline issues. Then all of a sudden this has changed. Before I start uh, making it hard for you, if I'm able to approach you and say, Celestine, is this something you need to discuss? You know, if I come to you in a way that I'm showing concern, you might feel the need to talk about it. But again, also depends with the personality. If I'm not able to speak about it. But if I'm a supervisor, I'm able to spot there's a problem. I can actually tell you I want you to take a day off. Whatever it is, please go sort it out. Go figure it out. You know, if I've seen in instances where corporates have brought people to the facility and they're like, no, go. We will pay for it. And that is why they're like, it's good that they did push me here that I can now work and heal. Yes, so they'll come. They're either sent by the corporate or their loved ones, or sometimes they realize says I need help. And then now, the pole pole, they start opening up. When you start, you create rapport, assure them of their confidentiality. The journey begins. I'm curious to know, at the very end, have you ever met a patient? Well, no, this is just, I just want to know, I'm just curious. Mm -hmm. Have you ever met a patient who was like, Initially, my, my family didn't care, but at the very end, mm. like, I was like, I was like, I was like, I was I was Yes, 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 yes. In fact, you'll find, um, let me give you a scenario of a man who would always never be home mm -hmm. at the time they expected to be home. They have children, so they have no time to be with the kids. And he was avoiding the wife because one, for some reason, his business stopped doing well. And so he was finding himself, he, he didn't want to go home early, probably not to answer questions or something. And the company he was staying with was for people who drink. And sometimes he would come at the wee hours in the morning, sometimes not drunk, sometimes drunk. And then over time, you see now what this does is at first you're spending too much time away from the family, including your children. Then your wife is getting agitated, irritable and everything. So you, you, you get strained. And eventually he started drinking. So it moved from just keeping away, mm -hmm. then he started drinking so that when he comes home, a macho. So I am able to, Nikiulizo aswali nitaeza kujibu. And he really got addicted and uh, had to get, a, uh, you know, had to turn himself in. And always felt very bad. He would always feel bad about the first his financial circumstances and now that he's here. And imagining that the wife has really to be the one also taking care of the bills that he's paying. And one of the things he was determined, I mean, I will go to rehab. I am ready. I want to go to that rehab. I want to go to rehab and come out a, a, a corrected man. And out of his own volition, he went to rehab. Today, he has a very happy family. I go to see them sometime and they came together and you can see the radiance and them saying, thank you. Mm. Thank you for guys taking care of me. Yes, you've seen, we have success stories. We have success stories and of course we have unsuccessful stories, yes. That gives us hope. Yes. Yeah, that yes. gives us so much hope because well, it is tough. Is there also a point where you get to talk to these people who, are, who have this person? Like the people who are trying to, Aki to kupeleke to rehab, Aki to, do you ever talk to the people what do you call the caregivers, the, the support, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, every time you're doing um, a therapy session, we try to do family sessions all the time to For bring the in the family. Mm. Yes. One, when I've already done my history with the patient, I also want to collaborate with the family. 
where is the family coming from? Where is my patient coming from? Now, I need to combine these two so that I can give a holistic care plan or treatment plan. Remember treatment, my treatment doesn't have to be the, the, the medicine. For me, it's more behavioral. For me, it's about the person being able to have the skill set, being able to have strategies to cope, to deal, to change in behavior and all that. But again, why is the family in all this? So what happens is sometimes the family does not understand fully what this person is going through, or even that family is a cause of this person's what they are going through. So if I identify that, I'll in a very kind way, I'll be able to communicate it back to the family to help them also to understand, to have the awareness of how to help this person once they get reintegrated after there. Because some people, people you guys, uh, the family is bitter, the patient is bitter. What happens in Mutashinta Mkigongana? But where the family understands and is, uh, starts accommodating and you're ready to God because they're ready for you, it will become easier for you again to start from wherever you you find each other and find your growth again. Mm -hmm. Now, where the family is adamant, then we prepare you to have the strategies too because they're already angry at you, all right? We may have to win them. So what is it that you're going to change so that they can also see that you're taking the personal responsibility towards your own healing? Then over time, they will also come on board. So you have to try and balance out. But family sessions and family therapy for every client is very important because no one is an island. They need this support system. The caregivers also get into what we call the, the caregiver, they get very tired. Um, I'm looking for that word. When it comes, I'll, I'll tell you what it is called. Burnout. They caregiver burnout. They have taken care of you, but every time, yeah. Every time yeah. we are back there, every time we are back there. So sometimes they just get very tired. So sometimes you also need to support them to understand maybe this one more time. Could we change how we've been doing it to accommodate this recovery process? Now that you've been there for the last 18 years, yes. you've seen so many mental health months. May, 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 almost 19 May. Yes. Is there any change, Lakini? Is there any, can you see some sort of improvement? I know we are becoming, we are all becoming sick. Mm -hmm. Like we are all sick. Kila mtu wako naka ugonjwa kake ka mental. But do you see any any type of change, whether positive or negative? Sure. That's a very good question, Celestine. And um, what I have, what I appreciate is that there's a lot of awareness being created around mental health. Sometimes I say thanks to COVID, that now we are open to these conversations because COVID really brought to the fore the issues around what we experienced when we were closed in together and a lot of mental health issues and now people come to appreciate. That is why even the, a lot of the online conversations around mental health have increased and there's very good intake. I appreciate that. Yeah, there's something good that came out of COVID. <laughs> out of COVID, wow. yes. Uh -huh. So since that time, one, there was an increase because when people are put together, a lot happened. Mm. Again, redundancies, it came with a lot of things. Again, now that also brought the appreciation of mental health and how it is important. So these conversations have continued. Now they have taken root and they are now widespread. Every, every May, like now this year's theme is keep moving for mental health because again, after COVID, we got that you can work from home sedentary. So we are moving our problems. You're always driving, getting seated the whole day. We are moving very little again, which is detrimental to our health. So I have seen a lot of awareness being created. I'm also seeing a lot of uptick. Therapy was not very popular before. You know, right now you tell someone, okay, there's still a bit of a challenge, people not understanding. <laughs> so there's still a bit of that, but um, the uptick is better than the previous years. Mental health had a lot of stigma. Even when I was starting to practice and get attached to those psychiatric units, you can tell what people feel isolated even by the society when you have someone who is going through mental health issues. So there was a lot of stigma. Stigma is still there. We are trying to fight it by creating the awareness. But the stigma then and the stigma that you experience now is different. People see it a lot more different. People are willing to even get involved to advise you or support you where to get, to get help. Insurances before are not covering mental health issues just like that. Yeah, right now, 
we can see that is also being appreciated. At least you will be given a portion of your insurance that goes towards that because it's a chronic condition. Previously, that was not the case. Therapy also had its own intricacies, but now you see. So all in all corporate sectors, you see insurance has changed in how they view, how they support and pay for those uh, claims. Uh, individuals, families are now getting more aware. Of course, it's still a challenge, people who still don't understand, people who think to Merogwa. Mm -hmm. You know, it is understanding that it could be, there are people who think, um, like when I was doing, I re recently I was doing a university uh, conversations on mental health, and there's a, a lady who said, in our community, mental health is seen as a general, it's a, like a curse. If someone commits suicide, in a certain home, it seems like that home has a lineage of curses, you get. So having to continue doing continuous education, then we get to even reach those people that by the time I'm committing suicide, it's a cry for help. Yes, so that's how I would say I've seen a lot of changes. Of course, there is a lot of treatment options available for different cases so that if I'm, um, you know, different people react differently to drugs. So there's a lot of all that uh, that has come up. And so it's a good thing. We can all be accommodated. And we are going to keep talking about it until Imefika, until where we want to. Yes, yes, yeah. we have to, until yeah. we are able now to, everybody to understand how to help, where to get help, who needs support. Because again, you need also to realize that you can be with someone in the house and you don't realize they are not okay. Again, you should be able to spot those changes, even your own child. At one time, they are with the drone, they don't want to leave the room. You know, sometimes we assume, especially teenagers, they get to a stage where now they are no longer in the family living room, they are almost always isolated in their rooms. As, as opposed to saying, be very keen. Mm. It could be they're also going through something or starting something. Always be, uh, be continuously involved in people's lives to notice when they start with the drink, they could be going through something. If they're not able to talk to you, you also have friends who can be able to talk to them. The problem is where you have a family where people don't talk about their issues, and therefore until things get out of hand is when they ask for help. Yeah. So someone can be in your own midis. Kuna ratio ya one out of akunaga. What? One out of one out of one to ten people who are visiting the facility, people people are having mental health issues. Almost people, every, every one in 10 visiting the outpatient, mm. one in 10 that's has a mental cool. health condition. One in 10, that's and a lot. Here we already 10. Yes, so. and that is not what took them there. And it needs a lot of screening for it to be identified. You know, like depression, you know there are those other conditions I'm telling you, like bipolar, that other things will just blow off. Mm. I can be so depressed and I'm always reporting to the office and going back home and you'll never notice. Because sometimes depression is laughter. I'm still laughing with you. I'm still trying to do what I can do, but I'm dying on the inside. Now this part is where we tell people, please speak up. The moment you get here, you're dying on the inside, please speak up. Because an extrovert is always an extrovert. So they're always laughing, they're always smiling. Then tomorrow you hear the committee, you said, you're like, eh? What happened? We never saw that coming. So in that case, we are, the gospel is to be in this awareness. Please speak up, always share. Tell someone who you trust. Yeah. So thank you so much, Madam Nancy. After, after all this is, you know, you know, I've been talking like when you bring them to me. Mm -hmm. So when you bring them to me, so now they want to bring them to you, because <laughs> now you've been talking like they know where you are. So want, so I want you to tell them where where they can reach you, how they can find you. All right. Uh, so if you go online, my Afia Africa M Y A F R I M Y A M Y A F Y A not FIA, My Afia, Africa. It's purely online. It's an online platform. You go to sign up, and then you, there's a bit of a questionnaire that asking a few questions that will help you to match with a therapist. Then you match with a therapist of choice who meets your needs and criteria as you will have answered. So it's very easy. Online in 24 hours, you have your therapist, you start your sessions. If you want to do an in-person, in that is where physically, there are people who don't really appreciate online. Physically, the therapist you get matched with, they'll always have an option for physical sessions. So do not feel stressed. Our, our platform is very uh, active and we have even had the latest sign up. The youngest was eight years. Yeah, yeah and we, were, we thought it was a mistake 
But because the form, once you sign, if you're under 18, it pops up a consent form. We know to understand we have consent. So, and there was a consent form only to learn that these parents were separating and this child is feeling. So a child of eight years, you can do talk therapy. They don't have the language. So we need to do art therapy, play therapy. So those ones can't be done online. So those ones will have to be seen, to be seen in person. So going there online, we'll be able to see you. And you can also reach us on the contacts as provided on our website. Thank you so, so much. So this kid came with the parents? So this eight-year-old? Yes. Yes. Because they were ready to support the child. So you can't see the child alone. A child can't give consent. They, so were, not, still... they were not shocked, like, how did this baby sign up for? That is when people have come to appreciate mental health and they need to have someone to talk to who is other than themselves. You need to talk to a stranger who you're going to open up to, which we find very, very impressive and encouraging. So the, the child started the journey, and sometimes you realize that brings back the parents together or gives them a better way to realize how they are going to co-parent without punishing this child, because the child has got no mistake they did. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's interesting. So thank you so much, Nancy. Thank you even for your time, taking your time. We are normally curious, Kujua, how do you handle these people? How do you handle these Like a very severe case? Well, uh, you have to take care of your safety first, okay? You must always know your patient and the condition. So you must always have your safety taken care of. Because I need to take care of you, but at the same time, in case you, it gets... So even the arrangement in a counseling room should be able to give you that ability to, to find your safety. So that can happen, though it hasn't happened to me, you should always ensure that you use proper counseling rooms that give you the ability to have your safety, okay. yes. Well, thank you so much. You're Asante welcome. Sana, mm -hmm. we've, uh, we've, we've learned more. We've learned a lot from you. Thank you for taking your time to coming to our show. I hope you don't go. Forever. Please come back. No problem. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you so much, guys, for watching. That's it from us today. See you next week on Wednesday. Bye-bye.